She left her little girl with her grandfather for just one afternoon. When the girl told him what he had done to her, her mother was horrified and immediately called the police. It was a cloudy afternoon, and the wind was blowing lightly as Camila and her little daughter, Sophia, walked holding hands towards Anthony's house. The girl looked curiously at the iron gates that surrounded the property. Her mother, noticing her apprehension, decided to start a conversation to calm her down. Sophia, darling, I'm just going to leave you with Grandpa Anthony for a few hours, okay? I need to take care of some work stuff, and I'll be back soon. It's okay, Mom, but I've never stayed with Grandpa before, said the little girl looking down. I know, my love, but remember I told you he's Daddy's father? Even though we don't spend much time with him since Daddy passed away, he's still our family, the only family we have, explained the woman. Sophia looked at her mom and nodded, trying to show courage in the face of the new experience. Good, my love. I'm sure you'll get along just fine. Take the time to get to know him better and learn a little more about Dad. And remember, I'm always a call away if you need anything, Camilla said, running her hands through her daughter's hair. Okay, Mom. With a smile on her face, she hugged the little girl, kissed her forehead, and rang the doorbell. When the man opened the door, Camilla was surprised by his shabby appearance and frowning face, even though he tried to manage a shy smile. And looking down at his granddaughter, he said, Hello, Sophia. I've been looking forward to spending time with you. We're going to have a lot of fun today, I promise. The little girl smiled shyly and said goodbye to her mother while entering her grandfather's house. Camilla waved at her daughter, trying to disguise her concern, and walked away, going back to the car. But her heart was hurting, since she had never been separated from her daughter for even a minute. The young mother was a strong and determined 30-year-old woman with a life story full of challenges and overcomings. Growing up in an orphanage, she always valued the importance of family and believed in the power of love to transform lives. The girl struggled financially all the time, working part-time to support herself. At the age of 24, she met Rodrigo, a dedicated and caring young mechanic. The two fell madly in love and in a short time they were married and expecting their first child, Sophia. However, Camilla's life would take a big hit when, a few months after the baby's birth, her husband tragically died in an accident with one of the cars from the mechanical shop where he worked. And even with the compensation for the accident, the money was not enough to guarantee the long-term support of the mother and daughter. Since then, the young woman has been fully dedicated to Sophia's upbringing and education, playing the role of mother and father at the same time. Time passed and the two were inseparable, facing life's challenges together and supporting each other. The tragedy further strengthened the bond between mother and daughter, making them true best friends. Mrs. Anthony, Rodrigo's father, was a solitary and enigmatic man who lived just outside the city, in a house surrounded by a huge garden. After the death of his son, he isolated himself even more, avoiding contact with his daughter-in-law and granddaughter. In the first years after her husband's death, Camilla tried to keep in touch with her father-in-law, but the attempts to get closer always seemed to collide with the pain and grief that both shared. So over time, visits became more and more rare, until the connection between the two families was practically lost. Sophia grew up listening to stories about her father, and even without knowing him, she felt a deep affection for his memory. However, the figure of the paternal grandfather has always been a mystery to the girl. The few memories she had of him were of a serious and distant-looking man who seemed to be hiding some secret in his mysterious house. So he wasn't the woman's first choice to take care of her little girl. The young woman was not very comfortable leaving her daughter with him, but she urgently needed to look for a job and had finally managed to get an interview for a steady job as a waitress. As she had no one to leave her with, she had to accept that her grandfather was the only option to take care of her for a few hours. And so it was. At the man's house, as soon as Sophia sat down on the sofa, a shiver ran through her little body. The place was strange, gloomy, and lifeless. The walls were a dark tone, and the lighting dim, making every corner seem to hide some secret. The little girl, only six years old, felt afraid and cornered. Anthony, looking fixedly at his granddaughter, spoke with wide eyes and a slightly forced smile. Don't worry, my dear. I know my house may look a little different than what you're used to, but I promise it's a place full of interesting places. For example, do you want to see my special room? Said the man, taking the girl by the hand and leading her to another room. The little girl tried to say no, that she was okay in the living room, but the man continued to guide her along the hallway and insisted with his creepy voice. Come on, little girl, let's have some fun. Meanwhile, 
Camilla hurried through the streets, with a heavy heart for having left her little girl with her grandfather, whom she didn't even know well. The worry and anxiety were visible on her face, making her expressions look dark and uneasy. The day was cloudy and windy. The dry leaves flew across the ground, creating a scenario that seemed to reflect the turmoil of emotions that the young mother felt. She arrived at her interview location, which was a small restaurant with a warm and inviting atmosphere. She took a deep breath, trying to compose herself and focus on the important task at hand. Impressing. But the worry for Sophia continued to bother her. Upon entering the establishment, the girl was greeted by the manager, a middle-aged man with a friendly smile and a professional posture. Good morning, you must be Camilla. We've been waiting for you. Please come with me, he said. The interview started with questions about her skills and past experience, but the poor woman was having a hard time focusing on the answers. Her hands shook slightly, and she stumbled over her words, unable to hide the insecurity that gripped her. It was like she was having a bad feeling, and the anguish seemed to have seeped into every part of her body. The manager noticed her expression and asked, It looks like you're a little nervous. Is everything okay? She hesitated before answering, not wanting to appear weak or incapable, but knowing that she couldn't hide what she was feeling, she explained, Sorry, I'm a little worried today. I left my daughter with her grandfather for the first time, and I'm a little uneasy not knowing how she's doing. The man nodded understandingly, and she could see a glint of empathy in his eyes. I understand, he said. Being a mother is a huge responsibility, and it's normal to feel worried. But she must be fine. Let's continue the interview and try to stay focused, okay? The interview continued, and Camilla did her best to pay attention to the questions and answer them clearly and assertively. However, the inner worry continued to consume her, making her think that she was going to lose an important opportunity. Once the interview was over, the young woman thanked the manager and left the restaurant, feeling relieved and nervous. She wasn't sure if she had done well enough to get the job. However, she knew she needed to get back to her little girl with a guaranteed job. So, determined to find a job, her mother spent the rest of the day walking around the city, handing out resumes and looking for other opportunities. Weariness and discouragement were evident with every step, but she couldn't afford to give up. Her life was really hard, and the incessant search for a stable job was just another challenge to be faced in her daily struggle to support her daughter. Her sore feet and the dark circles under her eyes showed how complicated and exhausting that day was. Camilla felt the pressure of the time passing as she knew that every minute away from Sophia increased her restlessness and made her more anxious. As the sun started to set, she began to lose hope of finding work that day. The poor thing had faced several interviews and handed in countless resumes, but nothing seemed to work. Her frustration and despair mounted as she thought about how she would get through another night of uncertainty and worry. Finally, as the city lights started to light up, the young woman decided it was time to go back to Anthony's house and get her little girl. Although the day had been hard, she couldn't allow herself to feel down since she had her little girl that depended on her. However, the way back to her father-in-law's house was long and tortuous. Camilla felt the weight of anxiety and uncertainty on her shoulders. It was as if she knew something was wrong. She imagined the various possibilities of what could have happened to her daughter during the day, making her feel even more scared. Speaking of the little girl, at that same moment, the man and Sophia were leaving that secret room where they had spent the entire afternoon together. He leaned down, looking straight into Sophia's eyes, and spoke with an enigmatic smile. This is our little secret, okay? You can't tell anyone. At that moment, the mother knocked on the door and struggled to contain her uneasiness. She was looking forward to seeing her little girl again and hearing what her afternoon had been like. Then the old man opened the door and she could see the little one in the living room picking up her backpack. Something in the atmosphere of the house seemed different and the woman felt a certain confusion when she realized that her daughter was all right. But she couldn't help but notice the air of mystery and conspiracy between the two of them, which made her feel even more uneasy. As the little girl walked to the door, Anthony said goodbye to Sophia, speaking softly in her ear. Remember what I said, Sophia, don't tell anyone, okay? The little girl nodded, and the grandfather walked away, allowing mother and daughter to be reunited. Camilla watched the exchange of words and gestures between them with growing concern. She didn't know exactly what had happened during her absence, but the air of mystery and the man's insistence that the little girl not share something with her made Camilla feel insecure and uncomfortable. The mother hugged Sophia tightly, relieved to see that everything was okay, but at the same time worried about what could have happened between her and her grandfather. 
That feeling was echoing in her mind and tormenting her with the doubt of what exactly this secret was about. Then the young woman smiled at her father-in-law, trying to hide her distress and said, Thanks for taking care of her today. It was a great help. Mr. Anthony returned the smile and looking directly at the little girl replied, It was nothing. You can bring her whenever you need. The look he gave the girl sent a shiver down Camilla's spine. They said goodbye and got into the car, making their way back home. However, on the way, the mother tried to start a conversation with her daughter, curious to know what had happened during the afternoon. So, what did you and Grandpa do today? She asked, looking worried at her daughter. The little girl hesitated for a moment, avoiding her mother's gaze, and replied, Oh, we, we played a little. Played? With what? She insisted, sensing there was something Sophia didn't want to share. The little girl bit her lip, looking nervous, and uttered a sentence that made that poor woman's heart race. He showed me some things that hurt. Camilla's face paled, and she struggled to remain calm as she drove. That statement was alarming, making her fear the worst. Then controlling her voice, even though she was shaking inside, she asked cautiously, What do you mean by things that hurt, Sophia? I, I can't say, Mommy. The girl turned aside and stared at the window. The mother tried to disguise her panic and pleaded, Sophia, you need to tell me everything, my love. What happened? He made me pick something up, said the little one. But no, Grandpa told me not to say. Honey! Now the mom was freaking out. You can tell me anything, my love. What did you get? And when did he make you pick up that? I... I didn't like it, Mom. I was scared. But he was by my side and told me it was just so I could see what it was like. Camilla felt her heart tighten and her eyes teary. And what else happened, honey? Please tell me. The girl shook her head, tears forming in her eyes. I can't, Mom. He said it was our secret and I couldn't tell anyone. I promised, Mom. Upon hearing such words, the poor mother could no longer hold back the despair that was growing inside her. Tears ran down her face and she sobbed as she tried to keep her attention on the road. Camilla's crying affected Sophia, who also started crying, not understanding what she had done wrong. Mom, did I do something? Asked the little girl in tears. No, my love, you didn't do anything wrong. Mom is just worried about what happened, okay? She answered, trying to calm her daughter, although she herself was in a panic. As soon as they got home, the young woman picked up the phone and called the police. With a trembling voice and bitter tears rolling down her cheeks, she spoke. Please, you have to help me. I left my daughter with her grandfather and... And she said he did something to her, but she wouldn't tell me what it was. She said it's a secret and that he made her touch something. I don't know what to do. I'm desperate. So after the report was made official, Camilla, following the police's instructions, met with the agents the next day who would accompany them to Anthony's house. With specific orders, the mother called the old man saying that she needed to leave her daughter with him again for a few hours. He agreed in that ominous voice, making the mother almost cry. So they went to his house. She tried to disguise her nervousness as she handed Sophia over to her grandfather, pretending everything was fine, and then she left. However, as soon as she walked away from the house and the man closed the door, agents began monitoring the audio from the hidden microphone in the little girl's blouse. Camilla's heart was pounding for letting her girl be alone with that man, but the police assured her that nothing would happen to her. The little one would only serve as bait to catch him in the act. So they listened to the two talking, and everything seemed normal until the moment when the man said, making the mother almost faint, Let's go to our secret place. She started screaming and begging the agents to rescue her daughter from that monster. The police team acted immediately, invading the house in search of the grandfather and granddaughter. Camilla went along, apprehensive and afraid of what she might find. They entered the house carefully and quietly so as not to frighten the possible criminal and followed the sound of voices into a closed room. Hold this, Sophia. Yes, just like that, said the man. So it was at that moment that the agents broke down the door and everyone was shocked by what they saw. Instead of the gloomy and sordid scenario, they found a well-lit mechanics laboratory with various tools scattered on the floor. In the center of the room, the old man and the little girl were working together on a small mechanical invention. Mrs. Anthony, scared, asked, Uh, what happened? Can I help you? Nobody understood what was going on. The policemen looked at each other surprised and questioned him. What's going on here? One of the agents asked, his voice firm. The grandfather, very confused, replied, We are working on a small project of mine. But what about you? What are you doing in my house, Camilla? Is that you? That's when he saw the woman behind the agents. 
The mother didn't know what to think or say. While she was deeply relieved, she didn't know what to say to her father-in-law. Then the agents, noticing the astonished expression of the woman not wanting to embarrass her, just said that they had received an anonymous tip and that they were just checking it. Anonymous tip? Of what? I only teach Sophia about mechanics and such, said the grandfather. Camilla, still with her heart racing, looked at Sophia and asked, Is it true, my daughter? Is this what you do here? The little girl nodded her head and said, Yes, Mom, I'm helping Grandpa make a robot. But you said it was a secret, said the mother, confused. He said it was a secret because he thought you wouldn't like to see me messing around with tools. They hurt. But Grandpa is always by my side helping me not to cut myself. It turns out that Anthony was actually a talented inventor and passionate about mechanics and robotics. He had taught his son Rodrigo everything he knew, and the two shared a deep love for their creations and discoveries. When Rodrigo passed away, the old man was devastated and has since dedicated himself to honoring his son's memory, working to finish an invention that the two had designed together. He was an assistant robot, able to help people with their daily tasks and bring joy to their homes. The project had a special meaning for the man and Rodrigo, as it represented the union of their minds and hearts, as well as being a way of helping others, something they both valued very much. Despite being a genius in the field, Mr. Anthony was always very discreet about his skills and knowledge. Few people knew about his inventions and the potential his creations had to revolutionize people's lives. Everyone in the room realized what a huge misunderstanding had occurred. Camilla approached him, teary-eyed, and apologized for having doubted him. He hugged her and said he understood her fears and concerns. So from that day on, mother and daughter visited their grandfather more often, learning about their passions and sharing precious family moments. The relationship between them strengthened, and Camilla came to see him as a father figure and an emotional support in her life. After many months of hard work and dedication, Mrs. Anthony's invention was finally ready. The assistant robot proved to be revolutionary and extremely useful, catching the attention of several companies interested in its project. He decided to patent the invention, securing the rights to his creation. Sales skyrocketed and the lonely man became a rich man. With his financial situation stabilized and the desire to be even closer to his granddaughter Sophia and daughter-in-law Camilla, he invited both of them to live with him. And so, the grandfather, mother, and daughter lived like a true family, sharing moments of joy, learning, and growth. United by the love and longing left by Rodrigo, they moved on, building a bright and happy future together. If you liked the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss and see you in the next story.